Well, these initials, OTB, appeared today. They stand for off-track betting. Once upon a time in New York, off-track betting was the first legal bookie. When OTB was first established in 1970, its primary functions was to raise revenue for the city and the state. That time, the money was coming in. Oh, the money was coming in. Everybody was making money. OTB was making money. It was a big part of the fabric of New York. We better get to the track. We don't have time. We got to go to OTB. Off-track betting. The city will be our bookie. The customers were as varied as the diversity of the city of New York. OTB took in over a billion dollars a year in horse racing bets, supported an industry, and employed thousands of unionized city workers. But something went wrong. Somewhere along the lines, something that was created to make money for the city of New York, not only was it not making money for the city of New York, it was costing the city of New York money. We're not performing well, and that's got to stop. We were always seen as a cash cow but we don't have a cash. Taking in the volume of bets that they did, you'd think that, gosh, what a great business, but they're the only bookie that ever lost money. Our total indebtedness, it was in the neighborhood of $80 million. The last thing you want to do is create unemployment. If anything, you want to create employment. OTB was shut down by the state, and thousands of workers were left with no recourse and no health care. It left me without a job, and it left me and my coworkers wondering, what's next? Why did off-track betting close? Who benefited politically? And who ultimately paid the price for its demise? Unless you get into the background of OTB, you don't know what's going on, because there's a lot of things that are being hidden. This is the story of what happens to people when a billion-dollar bookie goes bankrupt. This is the story of OTB. Mm -hmm.